Hi everyone, if you've been looking for a free to use, easy to use and simplistic storyboarding app for your iPhone or iPad, then you've come to the right place. Let's get into the tutorial for Storyboard Animator right now. So this is the Storyboard Animator. On the left hand side you can see we've got my short film which I'm currently in pre-production for, but we can ignore that because we can start a new project. So we press the plus sign on the top right here, and we're going to choose the size of our project when it comes to the panel. So you can import different size, you've got different vertical HD 9x16 and a morphic look you can go for if that's how you want your film to look. And I'm going to choose HD 16x9, so standard TV aspect ratio. And that starts our new storyboard panels. Now if I press on that storyboard panel, we're going to have the title. So I'm going to call this Storyboard Example. And done. Perfect. Now to start our actual first panel that we can draw on, we're going to press the plus sign on the bottom right here. And that brings up our first panel. So that 1.1 is scene one, shot one. So you obviously can have a number of different shots to each scene. So we're going to press on that panel and that expands it. And we now have all the different features that we can use for storyboarding on the screen right now. So I'm just going to pinch in this image of the panel so I can actually make it larger, smaller, I just want to fit it in there so I can still see all of the features. Now this will be easy on iPad, but with iPhone it's still very doable. Now the first thing that you'll be using of course is the pencil. So to the top right here you can see that's dark blue. That's the pencil you'll be using. So for example if I wanted to draw a house, lovely. And let's say we want a little tree here, so we've got a tree and do little bushy effect. To show you the different thicknesses that you can have on the pencil here, if you look at this little slider on the right hand side, at the moment it's at 5.0. However, if I want to make it thicker, I can put it all the way up to 200. So if I was using 200 thickness with the pencil, that would look like this. If I wanted to go thinner and use 100, that would look like this. And if I want to continue using around 10, which is what I generally do use, then I can just use that. So you've got different thicknesses that you can use for your pencil drawing depending on what you want to draw and how thick you want that to be. To get rid of these, so you can undo the action you've just done, you've got the arrows at the top here, one facing left for undo, one facing right for redo the action. You press the undo, get rid of that last action again and again. Now you can use an eraser on this as well, so it works in the same way as the pencil does. So if we tap on the eraser on the right hand side of the pencil, so we can actually tidy up a few little bits. So this tree at the bottom, I'm just going to erase part of that bottom of the tree. Now, as you can see, it can take some time to do that. So you can increase the thickness of the eraser as well. So let's say you want to increase it to 72. We can do that and erase as much as we want of that tree. And again, we can undo to bring back the tree. So I'm going to keep the eraser actually at about 25. That works very well for me, I think. Now you can also change the color of the pencil you're drawing with. So if we hit the black circle here at the top right, that gives you a huge range of colors that you can use from. We've got a grid, so you can change the different colors from the grid. And you can see at the top right, that changes the color to show you what color you're actually going to be drawing with. You can use spectrum, move that around, choose different colors. You've got sliders as well, so you can choose various different aspects of colors and mixing them together. And we go to pencil, that's how it's gonna look. Undo, and we'll go back to black. And you can also change the background color of your image. So let's say we go back to the house, we want the background for whatever reason, maybe it's to make the drawing stand out more. We want to create the base color as yellow, for example. That then changes the whole base color of your storyboard image panel there. Then you go back into layers at the top here, Press on that, go back to base color and change that back to white. Now, if you look to the top left hand side of the screen, you can see we've got two triangles facing each other with a line in the middle. That's because that is to reflect your image that you've drawn into the opposite direction. So let's say you've got a character running into a different direction. You just tap this and that will change the direction that that character is running in or the house is facing or the tree is facing. Now you can layer these images as well so that you only affect one layer. So if we look at the layer image panel, which is on the right hand side here, tap on that. And you can see we've now got foreground, midground, and background. So for example, this is all in the midground at the moment. If I want to draw something in the background, we tap on background, go back into the panel. And let's say we want to draw, I don't know, just a person. So we've got this person who's going to be in the background. Now, if I want to make a change to this, if I want to erase this character, for example, parts of it, and then I press on the eraser, if I erase over the house, 
that does not disappear. So that house stays exactly as is, even though I'm erasing it with my finger. That's because we're only on the background. Now if I go to the midground, and I do that, I will start to erase part of the bottom house here. Which would obviously be a mistake, so you don't want that. So you've got different layers here, foreground, midground, background, and whichever one you're working on, that's the only thing that will be affected. Now at the bottom left, you've got a blue arrow. So this brings out a really interesting panel here. You've got dialogue. So let's say the person is shouting to someone in the house and is saying, get out of my house. That's your dialogue, perfect. If we scroll up, we can then see action. So it could be Bob runs to the house. And then underneath that, you've got sound effects. So we've got the dialogue, we don't need that, but you can then add what sound effects you want. So for example, if you're filming this in a city, you might have traffic noise, you might hear people's phones ringing, that kind of thing. So you can add anything you want here that's gonna enhance your film when you get to actually filming. So it's really great for planning everything that you want to do. So that's a really, really good technique to use. So you press that arrow again to bring up what you've got there, tap that blue arrow, and you're good to go. Now you can add another panel. So let's say you wanna do two more shots of this scene. We're then gonna hit the plus sign at the top here. It's the plus on its own. And now we're into scene one, shot two. So shot two could be a close up of the person shouting. So it's gonna draw a really realistic head of the person shouting. We then press plus again, and we can do the next shot, which could be him from behind shouting at the house. Now, if you go to file on the top left here, tap on that, you can then see the shots that you've got so far. And you can change how you see them as well. So if you hit the book that's open on the top right, that changes it so you see them one after another, like a slideshow. Press that again, and it makes them go vertical. Press that again, and we're back into slideshow. Now, if you press the box with a pencil on here, that's next to that book, you can read the dialogue, the action, and the sound effects for each shot that you're looking at. So that's a really important thing to do there as well. If you've added stuff in there, you can see everything you've written so far. Press that back arrow on the top left. That's the blue one. And we go back into our storyboards options that we can go into. If you look at the bottom right, you've got a timer clock. This is, if you were to play this, show you the real time that it would be in the real film when you're filming. For example, if you tap on this clock, I will make this first shot three seconds. So it's three seconds of this person walking towards the house. We then move to the next shot by tapping on the right white arrow towards the top left of the image here. And then here, we can change that time again either by choosing it on this clock here. We can either press the plus to make it go up, the minus to make it go down for how long you want this to be on screen. If we go to play, and then bring the playhead right to the beginning. So this will be three seconds and I'll press play. One, two, three. Change the next shot. One, two, three, four, five, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a really good feature to have on this because then you can see how your film's gonna look pacing wise as well, which is really excellent. Now if you press the X in the top left, we're back into our storyboard editing situation we've got here. Now on this last shot we've got here for the scene. Let's say we got this wrong and this is actually the beginning of the next scene. Well, you can go to the 1.3 at the bottom here, put your finger on that, tap it once, and that'll change it to scene 2.1. So you can then have a next scene starting. If you want to go back and think, oh, actually I made a mistake, that is in the right scene. You can then tap on it and then drag it up. So you tap it to put it into the next scene and then you slide down to bring it into the previous one where it used to be. Let's say with this image, we want to copy it and paste it. We can copy that. So then you can see 1.3, 1.4, we've copied it. If we want to delete that, we can go into our file top left. We can then press edit top right, tap on 1.4, press the bin at the top and delete that panel. So we're back to where we started. Now let's say if we want to add a panel in between ones that we've already made. So let's say for example, we want to put an extra shot in after 1.1. We tap on 1.1 and then at the top here, we've got a plus and a plus with an arrow going left and an arrow going right. So that's to put a new panel before or after the one you've selected. So let's say we want to put a new panel after this beginning establishing shot. We press the plus that's facing an arrow to the right. 
and that adds a new panel in right there. If you want to do it before, you press the one to the left and it adds one right there. To delete, we want to unselect 1.2 because we want to keep that. And we highlight by pressing on 1.1 and 1.3, delete, and you've got your panels there. And we're back to how we were. If you want to copy and paste the panel, you can highlight that one, press the plus with the two squares that are next to each other here, and then go to 1.3, for example, highlight that, unhighlight the original one, and then paste with that clipboard into 1.4. So that's now 1.4 as well as 1.2. Again, we can delete if we highlight the correct one and go back to how we were. Now let's say this was your finished storyboard and you've got lots of different shots and images. You can export it by going to the cog on the left here of all the options currently here. You can go to share and export. Now you can export this as a PDF, a video as it plays in real time, bulk images as a PNG, just the text. I'm not sure what RTF is, but you've got HTML and the storyboard animator. So that will show up as a video as well. So you can show all these different things. You can highlight dialogue, action, sound effects. You can see here by ticking and unticking them so that they get sent in your export as well. Now there's also a pro version of this. So if you press the plus button to add another project, it will tell you to upgrade to pro. So you can only use two projects at once on this. You'll have to delete one project to add a second one. Otherwise you have to upgrade to the pro version, which is £3.49, which I actually think is pretty good to be honest for what it is. So normally you'd see pro version upgrade £3.49, but as I'm recording this for a tutorial, it's decided to say error loading. It also gives you different layers of onion skins. Onion skins is essentially when you can take one layer from one panel and import it into another panel, so you're mixing them together. Also removes an export mark. So when you export your project on a regular free version that I'm using now, you'll have red writing at the bottom of your scent storyboard that basically tells you where it's come from and who's made it. If you pay for the pro version 349, that gets rid of that. With the pro version, you also can use dark themes. So it's like YouTube where you can turn it from light to dark, which is better for your eyes, that kind of thing. And you can also use the timing decimal, which is something I probably wouldn't use anyway, but that is an option that you can use with the pro version. So as you can tell guys, I really enjoy using the storyboard animator app. It is fantastic. It is so simple to use. I learned how to use this in 24 hours. and I'm not particularly tech savvy, even though I have a smartphone filmmaking channel. So if that doesn't tell you enough about how good it is, then do get it and find out for yourself. If you enjoyed this video and you want to find out more about Pat's Filmic Pro tutorials, which is how I film my videos and my films, smartphone filmmaking tips, and to watch my iPhone shot films, then do hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.